Hey guys, welcome back to another video and before I get into everything in this video I would just like to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel All the new people that have come to this channel everyone who watches my videos and just supports me Just thank you so much and I can honestly say in the last three weeks or so I've seen more growth in this channel than I did like for the first eight or nine weeks of making this channel It's it's insane to think about honestly. Thank you so much and I don't know how to express how excited it makes me just to see that people are engaged and enjoying what I'm doing so thank you so much and again I wasn't able to upload last weekend because I was sick and I had a lot going on and he's still came to the channel and thought hey I like the stuff I want to subscribe and it just it's insane I can't even explain how happy it makes me so thank you so much and I will definitely be doing something to celebrate the next milestone on this channel so keep an eye out for that and just thank you so much so yeah that's what I really wanted to say and let's get straight into the video so as you've probably seen from the thumbnail of this video I'm back again with another art extravaganza video and for this one we decided to do a fashion era challenge that means we all decided on a fashion era we would like to base our image around and we just done whatever we like for this one so for this one i chose the 1950s mainly because i love the fashion from the 1950s i was kind of torn between another era but right now i can't even remember what that era was i'm so glad i picked the 1950s just looking at the fashion at how beautiful the women were and how amazing the clothes were and even the men how dapper they were it's just incredible so it was so fun to do I really enjoyed it and I really like how this piece came out I did decide that it was definitely time to go back to traditional I done a lot of digital art for the last couple challenges I done with art extravaganza and I didn't want to get through the whole art extravaganza thing without you know putting some traditional work in there because I really enjoy working traditionally and I don't get to do it often enough and I've been really enjoying digital work lately but that doesn't mean I should neglect my traditional skills so yeah that's what I done I did have a mishap though with my watercolors I was telling the people from the AAA group AAA is the Art Addicts Alliance in case you don't know what I'm talking about what I done was I dropped my watercolors behind the radiator in the kitchen and they're in a thick plastic case so they're just wedged in between the radiator and the wall and I've tried to get them out I've tried pushing them up with a sweeping brush I've tried shaking the radiator to try and get them out I've tried everything really I just can't get them to budge they've kind of wedged themselves completely so I think the only way I'm going to get them back is if I take the radiator off the wall and to be honest I, I'm not I'm not the handiest of people so I don't think that's something I will be doing in the foreseeable future so those watercolors are kind of unusable for now <laughs> so I kind of steered away from watercolor just because I only had my little palettes there is a tiny bit of watercolor in the end of this but it's just for a splash of color in the background I just figured that was easier than markers I decided I was going to use markers and go a completely different route for this one so what I done was instead of my usual thick black outlines I decided to go very light with pencil when I was light boxing my image onto my page and then go in with the markers and then my colouring pencils to thicken out the lines and it's really really satisfying when you put the colouring pencil on top of the markers if you haven't tried that technique yet I really think you should because it's it is it's really satisfying just because the colouring pencils when you get the right shade are very vibrant on top of the markers and it's just it makes it look I can't even explain it just ticks all the right boxes in my head <laughs> you know I was getting a little bit panicked around her face when I was putting the colouring pencil down went a little bit too dark in the brown and it seems to be a recurring problem with me shadows around the face area kind of get me and I did salvage it by going in with a little bit of fine liner just to define her eyelashes her mouth and stuff like that so she looks all right to me now but I was a little bit panicked there and I think that may be something I have to practice on on the in the future on the future <laughs> other than that I really enjoyed how this turned out her clothes are 1950s inspired as I said women did wear trousers in the 1950s but looking at the images of the 1950s clothes it was very much tiny waists nice curves kind of accentuate the womanly figure and I think that's really amazing because before that it was kind of straight down don't accentuate the curves and it's nice to see that they were kind of embracing the womanly figure instead of trying to hide it you know also the clothes were incredible if you look back the color that went into the clothes the color was very much a thing they didn't care if it matched it was just as much color as you can pack into something you do it so you see women with like pink shirts and blue trousers with like a yellow scarf and green shoes it's, it's incredible and even the houses back then walls were green the tables were blue the fridge was yellow it, it's an insane so just check out the 1950s era stuff and clothing if you have a chance it's truly it is it's gorgeous and 1950s is around the time of Marilyn Monroe and stuff like that so you had a lot of pinup characters power kind of you know what am I trying to say a strong independent women 
and holding their own, making themselves look good, taking pride in themselves and not kind of working equally with men. And it's good. It's it's nice to see. So, but truly, the 1950s clothing is gorgeous. And I really, really loved the high-waisted skirts. So I had to put that in for this. High-waisted skirts have always been a love of mine. I just feel like I don't have the figure to pull it off because you do see a lot of the women, they have teeny tiny little waists. And I feel like that's what the high-waisted skirt is all about. In my opinion, if you don't have a tiny waist and you wear high-waisted skirts, that's fine for you. I just feel like it makes me look bigger than I am. <laughs> that's why I don't wear high-waisted skirts, but I would love to. But you do see the waist that has like the thick band around the, the midsection to make their waist look even smaller. And then the skirt billows out and it just, it gives that fantastic effect. And then of course you have those iconic shoes that I put on her. I'm not quite sure what they're called. I should have really looked it up, but it kind of reminds me of the rockabilly era. And yes, I just, I really enjoyed this one. So yeah, let me know what you think of this one. I've been rambling about the clothing for a long time now. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye!